Today I'm smoking a pork belly like you'd smoke a brisket. Let's jump right in. I'm starting out with a beautiful store-bought pork belly. And pork belly is most often used for bacon and sometimes burnt ends. It's actually similar to a brisket in its intramuscular fat content, but it isn't burdened with the connective tissue that working muscles have. That means it's not as tough. A quick shout out to Harry Sue for introducing the pork belly smoke like a brisket idea to the barbecue community. Harry took a trip to France and found this unique take on smoking a pork belly, and since then it's slowly been gaining popularity. Fellow dad griller James from Smoking Dad Barbecue up in Canada also gave it a try. I hope I can do both of you guys proud today. If you'd like to check out their approaches on this, I'll put links to both down in the description. Now we're cooking this like a brisket, but thank goodness this isn't actually a brisket or I'd have a much harder time trimming it. If you're new here, I suck at trimming brisket, but trimming pork belly is pretty easy. Now I want to trim as much silver skin as possible from the meat side because this blocks the flavor from penetrating the meat early in the cooking process. Now when trimming silver skin, you want to come to one side, cut a little flap, and then follow across the meat with the knife, helping the silver skin come up. This is what it's supposed to look like when you trim silver skin. Now look at this corner. You see how thin it is? It's just gonna overcook and be, well, nasty. So I'm just gonna trim it off. Usually I'd save the trimmings and turn them into lard. You know, I'm a big believer in using as much of the animal as possible in the cooking process, but I don't really have enough to do that this time. Now I don't need to do any trimming on the fat side. This looks pretty good. As long as I'm doing this cook, I'm gonna do a little experiment. So I'll cut this big pork belly in two. I'm cutting along its length because I'm looking for the most consistent fat composition possible between the two pieces. If I cut it along the width, we'd end up with two very different pieces of meat. Since this is an experiment, I'm doing the best I can to keep as many variables the same as I can. It seems like every few months there's a new fad in the YouTube barbecue community. This time it's Lowry's seasoned salt. Bradley Robinson over at Chud's Barbecue told us all he uses it in one of his videos. Then Jeremy Yoder jumped on the bandwagon. And I love those guys. But when I saw the look on James from Smoking Dad Barbecue's face when he tried it, you know, James has no poker face and he clearly loved it. So I figured I must be missing out on something good. So let's see what all this fuss is all about. I'm gonna season this half with a very simple SPG rub the little added umami flavor in the form of celery seeds. It's just four parts salt, four parts pepper, one part garlic powder, and one part celery seeds. That's our control. I'm just using water here as my binder so I don't introduce too many variables into the experiment. Go ahead and season this pretty liberally, both sides, and get the edges too. All right, let's set this aside and move on to the other half. I'll use James's formula for this one. We still have four parts pepper, one part garlic, and one part celery seed but this time I'll use two parts Morton's kosher salt and two parts Lowry's seasoned salt. In addition to salt, the Lowry seasoning also contains paprika, turmeric, several other spices that, you know, in theory should show up as a distinctly different taste in the final product. And when you look at these side by side, you can tell which one's the Lowry's. You can see the red tint from the paprika on that one. I wonder if it'll still look that different when we're done cooking it. I'm gonna give these a little time to absorb those flavors. In the meantime, Let's fire up the grill. For those of you who are new here, this is my Yoder Durango offset smoker. His name's Boba Fett. Now the first ingredient to any cook is smoke. And the smoke is coming from red oak today. Texas style briskets traditionally cooked over post oak, but that's really hard to get here in North Carolina. But red oak will make a great substitute. The red oak will give a rich buttery first layer of flavor to the meat. Placing them into the cook chamber, I want these fat side up so we get that signature fat cap crispiness and that juice running down your chin goodness that you can only get with an offset smoker. I'm bunching them up so the meat will set in a more full, thicker shape as they cook. Placing them side by side like this will let them both get the same smoke and heat rolling from the firebox. Checking back in after an hour, you can see the bark is breaking a little over here, which is a great sign. It means the bark is starting to set. There are a few spots that look a little dry, so let's hit them with a little spritz of 50-50 water and apple cider vinegar. Another hour in, and we're getting close. I mean, great color on both of these. And it looks like the Lowry's one is keeping its color. Maybe that's a good sign. These will probably need about another hour at this stage. Be right back. Okay, at the three hour mark, these pork bellies are looking magnificent. At this point in a brisket cook, we'd be talking about wrapping in butcher paper or foil. I'm gonna try something a little different here on both of these. I'm gonna finish them in foil boats. Think of cooking in a foil boat as a little sweater for your meat. It's like laying on top of a blanket in the middle of winter. The insulation of the boat will keep the juices from escaping and keep the meat moist, while airflow over the top will allow the bark in this fat cap to continue to develop. Let's give these an hour more and see how close we are. We're back, and yep, 
these boys are ready to come off. Just like with the beef brisket, we cook to tenderness, not time or temperature, and my probe is going through these like a hot Phillips head screwdriver going through an extra large Dairy Queen blizzard. Wow. So, Harry Sue, how'd I do? Finally, after all that time, it's time to taste. Hey, if you're new here, this is my daughter, Leah, and my son, Teddy, who if you've been here before, you met last week in that brisket video. So Leah, this is a test of just two different seasonings. Same pork belly. All we're gonna do is taste and see what we think. And you can also tell them if this is a good recipe if I did this right, okay? Okay. We ready? All right, so let's start with this one. Pat, you wanna taste? Yep. All right, here we go. A piece for you guys. We'll put this right here for you. Here we go. Cheers. 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 I love it. Good. Not too smoky, not too spicy. Good. All right. So I'm interested in what you think about this one because this is a new flavor I'm trying. So here's one for you. Pat, you want to try this one? All right. <laughs> All right. I'll put this one here for you guys there and Teddy. There you go, Teddy. Cheers. Cheers. It has a lot more flavor than the other one. Yeah, there is more flavor, right? Mm -hmm. So this has got a seasoned salt where this has just got a regular salt. This has got paprika and garlic and a bunch of other stuff. I think maybe I'm going to start using this. It's pretty good. Watch this video next. I think you're really going to like it. And I'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.